Take up all over the place. Yeah, I get a picture. How many times he had to go into debt for the daughter? How many times he had to sacrifice for the daughter? He put 20 years into this life. You get the picture. But when he offered her, it was the great pride and dignity that I have not sacrificed in vain. I'm giving you my best. So watch, you get this, isn't this beautiful? That the Gentiles, like the wife or the bride, can be acceptable to Christ, sanctified through the Holy Spirit. I have sacrificed my life for their salvation. Pastor Stephen, let me see if I can. Second Corinthians eleven. Somebody find Second Corinthians eleven, chapter eleven, verse one, and that'll give a strong endorsement and confirmation to what I'm just describing to you right now. Second Corinthians eleven, one. Hit push or something. Who's got it? All right, there. Okay. Oh, that you would bear with me a little folly, and indeed you do bear with me. Look at verse two. For I am, well, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. See that? Look. Watch the beautiful allegorical. Uh, statement here. For I have betrothed you, I have engaged you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Paul sacrificed his life to make sure that his little girl was presented to Jesus Christ as a worthy bride. Is that powerful, brother? God oh, bless you. No extra charge. Thanks for the lending of the foot here. I have a good amen coming here. Right. See, you see that? Paul sacrificed his life. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 17, I am being poured out as a drink offering, as a service to your faith. There's no regret. How many glad that Paul had no regrets? Amen. No regrets. No, sir. Pastor Stephen and I have no regrets. Neither him, he, or I have received a salary from this church in almost 19 years that we've been in this church. Are we boasting, bragging? No. We're witnessing and testifying to you that it was worth sacrificing whatever was necessary in order to make sure that we present you to Christ undefiled, pure and holy, acceptable to Him. Did we deserve? Yes. Could we have required? Yes. But we did not. Still not on salary. And for the foreseeable future, are we independently rich? No. Are we broke? No. You see, God took care of Paul, and God's taking care of us. Amen. Amen. Are you getting a picture tonight? The, the priest sacrifices unto God on behalf of others in his fasting and praying and intercessory prayer. He offers up sacrifices of praise to God, and then he sacrifices his life. So Paul told the Philippians, chapter 2, verse 17. I'm really being 
poured out as a drink offering to the Lord. I'm about ready to die here. I don't regret it. Because everything I have sacrificed, have sacrificed of my lifetime for your faith. Now he's telling the Corinthians, I'm jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I don't want you to miss the wedding. Somebody say wedding. 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 How many know that I, I'm preaching on this Sunday morning? How many know there's a wedding coming up? Yeah. A marriage feast to the Lamb. Right. Are you ready for the wedding? Yeah. And guess what? This is your wedding, darling. He says, I have betrothed you. I have engaged you to one husband. Be faithful to him. Let me just throw this in there. You're going to enjoy this. What's the difference between the, a virgin and a chaste virgin? Virgin, by definition, does not mean also that it's chaste. Well, you know, the word chaste means pure. So what is the difference, and I've said this before, but just for the sake of repetition, because that's the first principle of learning is to repeat. Just ask your kids. How many times you got to tell them the same thing over and over again? It's called repetition until they learn, until they get it right. So what's the difference between a virgin and a chaste virgin? All the virgins are pure. They haven't been defiled. Is that correct? The chaste virgin is engaged while the virgin is not. And that's the Greek interpretation here. That's the Greek meaning of this scripture. The definition of, of a virgin that is chaste here, not in moral purity, but the fact that she's engaged. So Paul is reminding the Christian Corinthian Christians, you're engaged, honey. Act like you're going to get married. Isn't that powerful, babe? <laughs> you what now? You say something? I'm going to get married again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to get married again. So two time are you? But anyways. <laughs> All the virgins are pure by a definition of moral purity. But Paul is saying, I'm jealous over you. Because I have betrothed you, I've engaged you to one husband. Don't mess around. Don't take your time of engagement lightly. I'm infringing on this Sunday morning's message. He said, I want to present you as a chaste virgin. In other words, as a virgin, morally pure, Who's engaged right now? Don't forget you're engaged. Don't forget you're engaged. So let's go back to Romans chapter 15 and verse 16. I'm going to give you Dr. Kenneth Weiss's exposition in the Greek New Testament. Are you learning anything tonight? Amen. I wish I could hear our YouTube and CD audience saying amen, but I can't hear them. But I'm glad you're here. Let's look at that verse. I hear an amen. Our uh, technician back at the camera. He can't say amen because we be too loud. The microphone's right there where his face is. But he has a he has a paper that has a big amen on the paper, and he's picture it up. See, look at it. Look at that amen. See? Amen! Now, that's not a cue card for me to say amen. That, that's what he said. Hallelujah. He says, that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. So God gave Paul a very special grace so he could be a minister to the Gentile world. The Philippians, the Romans, and all the other ones. Galatians and and all the rest of them. So, ministering the gospel of God, the good news, that the offering of the Gentiles, see, see that? The offering of the Gentiles. You see the picture of the Corinthian church offering you as a chaste virgin? Engaging you to one husband? The father saying, her mother and I, give her away. The sacrifices that people make in order to present someone presentable at a wedding? You get in the picture? Mm -hmm. We who are consecrated priests, our job 
is to help you get ready for the wedding and be excited about it. That the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Listen closely. Minister here is not the usual word translated minister, namely diakonos. Diakonos, you get the word deacon, for instance, from diakonos. That I might be a minister of Jesus Christ, the Gentile. But here it's not that usual word. It's leotoros, gos. Used in a secular life of a public minister. How many know that, it, like in Canada, anywhere, or in England, they use the term the minister of finance, minister of internal affairs. You get that, minister? That's, that's diakonos in the Greek. In other words, they're deacons for the country. <coughs> that, the diakonos in the Greek means deacon. But that's not, wait a minute, in sacred things, now in sacred things of the, <laughs> The word Leotobos is, in sacred things, the priest of the Jerusalem temple. So when he's saying, I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, he's literally saying, I'm, 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 I'm a priest to the Gentiles. Are you getting that? I'm a priest to the Gentiles. Paul uses it here to speak of his ministry of preaching the gospel as a priestly ministry. Whoa. Why? Because he's sacrificing himself and he's presenting these people access to God as a priest function would it enable him to do. Are you getting a picture of that? Is that powerful, Brother Dave? Are we learning something today? Yeah. Watch it. He also adds here as a priestly ministry, and of equal value. Pastor Stephan, this is so important. Our priesthood is of equal value and sacredness to the ministry of the priesthood of the Old Testament. Our priesthood is of equal value or more than the priesthood of the tabernacle and the temple in the Old Testament. That's the Greek presentation of this verse. The word ministering is again another of those words speaking of a ministry that is sacred. It's not diakonos. It's not deacon. It is far more intense. Far more closely related to sacerdotal ministry of the priesthood of Christ. The word ministering is again another of these. We're speaking of ministry that is sacred, used of the priests and Levites who were busied with the sacred rites in the tabernacle and in the temple. In the Septuagint, Greek version of the Old Testament. Denny explains the offering, watch now, the offering which Paul conceives himself as presenting to God is the Gentile church. Paul is saying, I am offering the Gentile church to Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 and 2, that I just read to you. I'm jealous over you with a God of jealousy because I've espoused you to one husband. Is this powerful stuff or what? Absolutely incredible. And the priestly function in the exercise of which this offering is made is the preaching of the gospel. The priestly function is the preaching of the gospel. Every time you share your testimony, you are exercising in your priestly function. You're literally depositing seed in people's hearts. Can I have an honest audience here tonight for a moment? Who's ever in a little way, tried to play Cupid. <laughs> we have one and a half honest people. Three, four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, you know, your daughter says, I like this one. Mom says, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> and the son says, I like this girl. Mom said, you don't like that one. You don't like this one. <laughs> Even grandparents 
<laughs> I mean, we're not the matchmakers. But we'd like to have our say in it. Because, see, usually the ones that are older have trod down the road of failure, mistakes. We don't want our kids to... You've been around the block. And, and we don't want our kids to do the same thing. I'm not going to go through the whole story. But right next to my office... There was a dry cleaners, Becknell's. Remember Becknell's dry cleaning in the corner? It used to be there years ago. And the lady who ran it, her name was Mary. And I only knew her on occasion, stopping in, putting my clothes in, picking them up, my own business. Once in a while, we chat a few words as she was waiting on other customers and so on and so forth. And then she knew a lady that worked over at Diane's school. Her name was Elizabeth. She was a guidance counselor there. Diane did not know Mary. I didn't know Elizabeth, but Elizabeth and Mary knew each other. And Elizabeth used to go put her clothes in the same dry cleaning as I did. And Mary asked Elizabeth one day, Would you happen to know that you might be a very old Judea preacher? She said, no, well, wait a minute. Diane at our school, my baby, who hmm. was Diane? So they conspired. They played the funeral. Mary begins to call me at my office. That's not, my office wasn't there at the time. My office behind this was thinking on Airport Boulevard at the time. There's a lady who wants to meet you. Really? Diane didn't know anything about it. But Mary and Elizabeth conspired. Hmm. And Elizabeth told Diane, if somebody wants to meet you, what does he do as a preacher? Hmm. <laughs> 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 so he's not going to stifle my enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> Diane wasn't quite ready for the righteous brother. <laughs> For the priesthood. And I I said, Who's this lady? She said, Well, she works at that school, vice president of a girl. Do you know her? No. You don't know her, but she's all that good, right? <laughs> and she, I said, Well, not really. And she called me four or five times and said, This lady's waiting for you to call her. She's waiting for you to call. Go out on a date with her. She wants to call her. Diane didn't have a clue. So finally I broke down one day. And call the school. I said, hi, this is Reverend Gil Bellick. Is Diane, please? They may ask me to replace. So the secretary says, excuse me, Reverend. Diane, you're dating a reverend now. <laughs> <laughs> so Diane gets on the phone. <laughs> I said, hi, my name is Reverend Gil Bellick. I'm a, you see, I'm French and I'm embarrassed to say this. I should be able to have all the suave necessary to sweep a lady off her feet and bring out all that French cuisine, if you will, <laughs> and just... When you're in a ministry all your life, you're clumsy at dating. <laughs> you just, you know, dating is not exactly your, your high test, okay? This, and so my approach to ask her for a date was this. Apparently, there are people who want us to get together on a date. Is that okay with you? <laughs> Can you imagine a pitiful approach to ask for a lady to have me on a date with you if somebody else wants us to get together? Well, thank you very much. I feel good about myself, you know. She said, she laughed a little bit, and she said, okay. Oh, I'm past that. <laughs> so we went on our first date, and after the first date, I shook my head. And she went home shaking her head. Both of us, her head was shaking. And because see, the first night we went out, I was five minutes late. So that, that didn't work out very well. I did pay the meal, though. And after the meal, we had a little lake in the back and uh, behind that uh, Applebee's. Applebee's out there in Harvest Center 26. 
We walked around the lake, and all hands pointed into it. <laughs> no. We're talking about the party. You know what I talked about on the first day? As we walked around. That was our first day. On the first day, I talked about what I'm looking for in a pastor's wife. Oh. oh. <laughs> this might be a good time to stop the course. She reminded you about the party. Okay, so she went to school the next day. And how'd you like your date? Nice man like that, but not for me. <laughs> and meanwhile, Mary calls me. Did you have a good time? Lovely lady, but she's too well healed. She's too beautiful, too attractive, too desirable, and I refuse to stand in line with the behind the dudes. You know, in her thick black book of names and phone numbers, waiting to be the next one that she'll take out. Oh, I don't want to do that. Page five. And then she called me back, Mary. Three or four days later, she wants to she wants to take her out again. She wants to go on a second date. Oh, I don't think she does. Like, yeah, she does. She's waiting for you to call her. She like Joy, did you want to take her out again? True story. And so I broke down after two weeks, and I, I said, "All right, I'll call her." And she, I called Diane. And I didn't do any better on the second time. I said, "Apparently, the same people wants to go out again." Is that okay with you? You know. Were you at least on time this time? I was on time the second day. Took her to a Chinese dinner and a movie that night. Now, something happened on the second night that didn't happen on the first night. First of all, I didn't talk about what to look for in a pastor's wife. That's not my idea. I didn't set the qualifications, but, but something happened in the spirit. Now, so all this to say, all that to say this. We love to play Cupid anyway, don't we? But watch now, watch now. You've been around long enough to know when you see two together whether they're meant to be each other, to be with each other. You know, are we old enough to see that? Are you experienced in life enough to be able to see that when you see these two together, gee, both are making a lovely couple. A marriage made in heaven. I want you to get this. It's very important that you pick up on this. When you see someone you should be able to discern something. This person, if they don't know the Lord, would love him if they knew him. I'm going to try to play Cupid. I'm going to see if I can get them together. You never know 
But that person that you lead to the Lord might be another Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. Might be another Earl Roberts. Might be another huge name for God. You don't know. Or it might be just simply a good pastor shepherding the flock of God. You don't know. But priests are called to make sacrifices to God and sacrifice themselves as a drink offering poured out to bring others to Jesus Christ. Yeah, sweet it is. <laughs> you love the Lord tonight? Amen. We had a good time tonight. Give the Lord a good time. Amen. 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 And now, Pastor Stephan, I think that this Romans chapter 15, verse 16, really nails it. Nails it. <clears throat> as far as the Old Testament, New Testament priesthood. He's literally saying in the Greek. I'm not talking about the echinos, which is the deacon part of it. I'm talking about the lien on gross, which is the priestly function of the ministry of Jesus Christ, marrying people to Christ, or engaging them to Christ. It's powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. All right. Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you tonight that we are called of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we are his offspring. In him we live, move, and have our being. But, Father, in this church tonight, there, there are quite a number of priests here tonight. I pray that we will put on our priestly garments. And walk with the dignity of the call. Walk in the dignity of the call. Lord, we give ourselves over to you and we want to be responsible, good stewards of the call in the ministry. That others would see in us Christ, the hope of glory. And discover the riches of his glory. Father, tonight, we give ourselves, according to Romans 1, 12, 1, over to you, our bodies, living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto him, offering each member of our body as an instrument of righteousness unto God. And tonight, Father, may our voice, may our hands, may our feet be those of a priest. So we can help people access God. If they don't need but a moment of prayer with them. We believers are called to pray with those who have not found that peace with God yet. So help us, Lord, to be good priests of the Lord in the house of the Lord. We commit ourselves to this tonight in this church, this body of believers, Calvary, community church. Father, there's no other place we'd rather be and with those who have been set free. For those, O oh Lord, and with those that are busy for God, busying ourselves with the responsibilities and the duties of the priesthood, we give ourselves wholly over to you. In Jesus' name tonight, and everybody said amen. amen. Give the Lord another good time.